Deuteronomy 18, 9 through 12. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord, and because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Witchcraft, sorcery, wizardry are all practices that have been prohibited in the Bible. There are Christians who believe that these practices are not real and that they are just made up. But if the truth be told, God would not forbid us to get involved in something that we cannot do. These practices are real, and for thousands of years, people have been interested in supernatural power. That is not from the Lord God Almighty. These practices often allow forces to enter from the spirit realm to the physical. They create openings, doors, and portals permitting unholy spirits unrestricted access. God takes these practices very seriously, and you should too. You would be so surprised at the amount of people in the church that secretly are involved in these practices, or when they are sick, or they want to know something regarding their future, or their life, they get involved in these practices. As a Christian, you need to understand this fact. There is a real spirit realm, and time and time again, we see this spirit world in the Word of God. I read a story about a man under demonic possession who came to a priest for help. The priest was successful in casting out the demon, and the man went home. However, the next day he came back to the priest under demonic possession once again. This cycle kept happening for four days. So as the priest was praying about the situation, asking God's help and guidance, he was shown a vision of the man's house. Every time the priest cast out the demon, it would leave, but return inside the man's home through a painting he had above his bed. Unknowingly, this man had hanged a cursed object right above his bed creating a portal into his house. This antique painting had actually been passed down through his family and had belonged to his great-great-grandmother. Unbeknownst to him, since he had never met her, he was not aware that she was a high priest in an occult group. Together with the priest, the man went to burn the painting, but the painting refused to burn. They set it alight and watched for a prolonged period of time, and the painting refused to burn until they started praying. That fire and the prayer destroyed the painting, and the demon no longer had a point of reference in his home. The portal was destroyed. Sometimes we keep objects for sentimental reasons without knowing the spirits behind them. Be careful of family heirlooms that you don't know the origin of. What are the things you have been holding on to in your life that you need to let go of? What are these objects you have right now that you need to let go of? Pray and ask for God to reveal such objects. Demon portals are real. Some people don't believe in this. They don't care about these things. They just want to collect art. But as a Christian, you need to be particular about the stuff you allow into your home. You need to be particular about the stuff you get involved with. There is a real devil who looks for any reason to be involved in your life. You need to ask God to open your eyes to the things that are in your possession. A woman bought a necklace that was made of gold. 
she started wearing this necklace and problems started in her life. She always had nightmares of someone attempting to strangle her. She couldn't sleep at night. She hated the nighttime because of these nightmares. It was too much for her. This continued for a long time until she got tired of this. She went to a pastor for deliverance. When this pastor started praying, the necklace started changing color. That was when the pastor noticed the necklace. They both struggled for a long time to remove the necklace from her neck. After they removed the necklace, the pastor saw a small inscription that was written in an old language. They found a way to translate the language, and it read, Sold to the devil. I am not barring you from buying certain things, but I just want you to know that there are many things out there that have been cursed. There are many objects out there that have been dedicated to demons, and demons are following these objects, looking for the people that will be in possession of them. You will never know the secret of the things you have until God reveals it to you. You need to ask God to open your eyes now. The second type of portal is a spell. This is something that can become common in the world today. You will see sorcerers teaching people how to cast spells, and people are seriously taking part in this. They think it's all fun and games, but they don't realize the gravity of what they are doing. You see them incorporating them in children's shows and encouraging them to pretend to be something that God has forbidden us to be. Some Christian parents believe that it is harmless and just child's play. It is not, in fact, harmless. What may not have an effect now may have one later down the line as they grow older. Be careful what you expose your children to. Just because the world says it's okay does not mean it aligns with the Bible. These spells are not what you should say. There are many records of teenage boys and girls getting possessed after saying some spells. Young people like to dare each other to do such things. When you cast spells irrespective of the reason, you are connecting yourself to the spirit world. Instead of the object, you are using yourself as a medium. When you cast these spells, you are open to the spirit world, and they will rush to manifest to you. It is a must that you run away from any of these practices because of the dangers there. I am telling you, nothing good comes out of this. Don't play any paranormal games. Don't follow them to go on a devilish adventure. Don't go ghost hunting. Don't follow them to go and look for demons. The spirit world is not a joke. It is not a place you can go and play. Demons are looking for every opportunity to take over your life. If your eyes could just get a glimpse of the spirit world, you would not mess with some of these things. I honestly believe that one of the reasons God does not permit us to see into the spirit world is because we probably wouldn't be able to handle the things that we would see. God takes these practices seriously, and you should too. Learn to not make light of things that God takes seriously. God has literally only your best interest at heart. God only cares about you. And if He tells you to stay away from something or a particular practice, it is to protect you. Think in your own life when you warn your own children about something. It is because you love them and you only want the best for them. And that is exactly the same with God. God loves you and He loves you enough to warn you. Leviticus 26 And the person who turns to mediums and familiar spirits to prostitute himself with them I will set my face against that person and cut him off from his people. The face of the Lord is against those who practice any of these. Involvement in such occult practices will always separate someone from God. Revelation 21.8 
But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death.